Well, hello, everybody. Good morning. It is April 9th, 2024, and you are in our situation room. Hi, I'm Becky from Power Tools with Thread. Glad you're here. We've got lots of folks in the chat already this morning. Let me scroll down to the latest comments. I'm trying to keep up with y'all. It is very good to see everybody here. Oh, my goodness. Today, I have got to get working on finishing the binding on Home Again, which is a Lori Holt quilt. So I'm going to be doing that this morning, starting that up. But, uh, oh, my goodness. Well, today, not today, yesterday, I'm a little, it's a little early yet this morning. Hold on just a sec. Oh, we have a virtual kitchen over on the other side of the room. Yes, good morning, Tina. Good morning to all of you. It's great to see you. I hope you all survived the eclipse. I know we did. <laughs> it got very dark here because it was just so cloudy. Anybody who was trying to watch the eclipse in the San Antonio, Texas area, I live just southeast of there. Uh, it just got really dark about 1.30 in the afternoon, and that was it. I love seeing you guys chatting amongst each other like old friends. If you're new, please let us know in the chat. If you are new, that is when it's live. If you put I'm new down in the comments, that's not seen until after the end of the live video. So uh, if you, you need to have a Google account and sign up for Google, and then you can sign in and you can go ahead and get in the chat on the sides. And that way you can see what's going on live and respond to other people. And if you are new, you might notice in the chat, they will use an at symbol, which is above the two on a standard keyboard. And that at symbol, and then you start typing the first couple letters of a person's name. And what it does is it'll give you a couple of choices of that. Any of those names in the chat that start with that letter, you highlight the one you want and then you keep typing. But on that person's screen, their name pops up highlighted. Like I think mine comes in in an orange. And so uh, that way they know that someone's talking to them or responding to them or asking them a question, whatever. But please note, it is not private. That is still a public chat. So. You guys look like everybody's Donna Marie has got her coffee going. She's ready. Frito's here. Come here, Frito. Frito. Frito Frito's over by the door. You want to go fish? Let me use the magic word. Frito. Come here. You want to go fish? She wasn't paying attention. She's still getting used to. Hi, babies. Come say good morning. There you go. Oh, she likes her goldfish. She's still getting used to uh, being a one dog family. Her eating habits have changed a little bit. She's no longer wolfing down her food, saving her biscuits. Yeah, you're a good girl. Say good morning. <laughs> Got a little Frito love. <laughs> anyway, thank you, sweet girl. Yeah, you want one more? We'll save the other one for tomorrow. Okay. Anyway. Oh, you met Amy Bradley last night. Really? Oh, good. I love that. Post it on Facebook. I want to see the patterns. Yeah. Did you get to talk to her? And I would love to, I would love to meet them. Yeah. <laughs> Frito, you're getting all kinds of love. So not dark at all for you. Oh, you, you're in Long Island, Scotty. Yeah. Okay. I know. Hi, Bonnie. Oh, now Bonnie was up in the mix of it. Uh, had bagpipes and played. Oh, how nice. Played Amazing Grace in the distance. How nice is that? <laughs> Bonnie, did you guys get to see it at all? She's still up there in Kerrville. I think they're heading back. Um, no, you went back yesterday, didn't you? Mm -mm. Today, they're heading back today. That's very cool, isn't it? Very, very cool. So yeah, it went dark in Central Texas. Real dark. The chickens were fine. So I've got to get some sewing done today. And I'm going to be finishing up my binding using my binding method. It's not my binding method. It's a binding method. But it's to finish a quilt with a diagonal seam binding. Uh, on the last bit of it. Okay. So this is home again. <clears throat> For those of you, let me show you what it. I'll show you what it looks like right now. It's in a big wad on top of my sewing machine, but it's been hanging on my wall for a little bit. I had another, um, 
Um, again, let me see. I it's been hanging on my wall for a bit. It is a Lori Holt um, pattern, and it's just beautiful. They marketed it as a uh, two color quilt, so I chose chose the orange version because while I love red, let me there it is. Let me share my screen with you guys so you can see what I'm talking about. But um, well, I love the red and white. Of course, it sold out right away. But there, that's the one I'm talking about. Okay, so it sold out right away. And I went ahead and chose orange because all of the, uh, yeah, I got this one. They called it pumpkin, not orange, right? But those were all of the colors you could choose. And I've seen several variations of it on our Facebook group. So people have been doing beautiful work. But it was a free sew along and then you just order the kit and it came in and whatnot. But so that's what I'm working on this morning. Um, uh-oh, uh-oh, <laughs> Dave's done some shopping. <laughs> you know, charm packs are great for um, table runners and whatnot. Or, you know, there are, there are pattern books out there for charm packs, which are great too. Okay. I love everything about the home again quilt too, Vicki. You know, there was just something very, there was just something very peaceful about it and soothing. And I don't know how or why I did not get bored um, making, you know, the same block a dozen times. I don't know how. Let's see. Oh, good. Mary Ann, you made your first snapplique from beginning to end. Good for you. That's wonderful. Congrats. Isn't that neat? Y'all, there's a whole thread on, on, on the Facebook group about um, they, they, they don't like snapplique. They don't want to do it. It's too hard. They, they wish I would go back to just teaching same old stuff, right? And, and that's okay. I didn't take the thread down. They were very gracious about it. Remember, we always need grace. But they were really nice about it and everything. And I read through all the comments and I respect all of that. That's fine. They're entitled to their opinion. Everybody was very nice. <clears throat> Few people stood up and said, I like all this. You know, it, to me, it's all about growth. And uh, especially like on the Happy Halloween quilt, if, if you don't want to do the snapplique method, you don't have to. But you could certainly join in and sew with us. You can do the applique the old fashioned way. Nothing wrong with that. You know, there was a. Um, there's a fabric kit for it. I don't know if they're out right now or they got more coming. I know they have, they're going to cut another hundred kits, but you know, you can just get the pattern, which is a $12 download, right? And then source your own fabrics and you can just do it. So uh, the old fashioned way, I love to challenge myself with the nice, uh, with, I love to challenge myself with the new things that are out on the market and the new technologies that are out there and sharing that with you guys. It, it keeps my brain engaged. It keeps me um, uh, interested in what I'm doing. But yeah, if you know, if you don't have to have a scan and cut and you don't, if you do have one, you don't have to have the newest, latest and greatest lady put on there. She scored one for uh, an old one for like a hundred and some dollars, which is great. That's fantastic. You know, it's okay. It's okay. It's all good. But then on the other side of that, there are dozens of posts of people who are learning the snapplique method and uh, and they're doing it and it's great. So, oh, I did find my snapplique on the USPTO, the U.S. Patent Trademark Office yesterday. That was fun. I, I look and make sure that it's there. So that's fun. So let me show you what I'm going to do. Yeah. I know you guys are like, oh, I love snapplique. <laughs> teach me more. Teach me more. Last yesterday, I was working with the testing of the Happy Halloween block. Julie from Designs by Juju asked me for samples to put on her website. She's going to release those designs this week. I don't think I'm going to make that because I'm shooting the video right along with it because I'm only going to make it one time. All right. 
So I got the scan and cut part down. Today I'm going to shoot cutting out the letters and all of that, but it's getting that background quilting on and getting that background quilting inside of what I'm going to, inside of a basting box to be able to trim it with the trimmer by George. And uh, that's tough because you can't have a basting box with multiple hoopings because that's a very large piece. It finishes at 12 by 41. I don't have an embroidery hoop that big. So no basting box. So in that case, I've been, if you guys can come up with a better method, let me know. But in that case, I was thinking, um, I'll probably go ahead and do all the background quilting to a 12 by 41 finished and then use the domestic machine to stitch. You know, I'll draw lines of a 12 by 41 rectangle all around the edges and then use the domestic to just stitch that rectangle and then trim that. What do you think? I don't know. I don't know. Or I may not even have to do a basting box on it because I can keep. Anyway, I, that's all very abstract, but that's what my brain's doing, you guys. <laughs> so if you think about it, um, I might miss it here in the chat. So shoot me an email, powertoolswiththreadedoutlook.com. Okay, I'm going to do the no math method of finishing a diagonal binding, a seam binding uh, with a domestic machine. Okay, I don't like the look of, and the only time I do it, this is me personally. I'm not being ugly. Where is it at? I can't even see it. I'm not crazy on a quilt about the look of the straight binding. You can't even see it right here. That's that little line right there. I don't care for the look of the straight binding finish on a quilt. Little, this was too small to finish it up with a diagonal. So that's why I did that. Isn't that cute? You guys, this is all snapplicate. See the precision? And I hear people saying I'm too old to learn it. You're determined to get it right. Now you're trying the bird legs. Okay, the bird legs are just a scan with, that was done as a scan on the, on the Luminaire. And you know, y'all, I've got a lot of new viewers. And um, a lady was talking in the Facebook group about how she's having trouble going through and figuring out the snapplique and whatnot. You guys need to dig back into the archives of my channel. I have nearly 800 videos or over 800 videos on YouTube. There, there's chat, there's live videos like in a, in a situation room where I'm showing how to do it, but you have to suffer through all of the chat. And I try on our, on our videos, usually a day later or so I can, I can, um, I can get a summary of what was said on the video. I have to wait a day for the technology to catch up and whatever it does in the AI, whatever. <clears throat> so I try to do a summary of it and then put it as the first comment in the chat under the video. So you can look at that and go through and find the timestamp of exactly what you're looking for. I try to put what we're doing in the title of the situation room and then take that and put it into a, I pin that to the top. I, it's, I haven't done it because in a couple of days, because I was in Tempe, we went to Arizona, but I try to take that and put it as the top comment in the chat and then use the timestamps. And you can look through there and click on it and it'll jump you right to that spot in the video. So I do all I can. Cause I realize I've watched, um, I've watched many YouTubers that make there are some YouTubers that make videos and they use the same title every single time on their videos. You can't find what you're looking for in a search. Okay. So there's that, or there's an actual tutorial of how to digitize hand stitching on the Luminaire. And I did it probably two or three years ago. It's there. So keep digging. They're there. Okay. And I did give her the link in the, in the comments. I gave her the link of just the tutorial of how to do that. Beyond that, that's up to you. <laughs> I do what I can. But a lot of this is the same stuff over and over. And a lot of it I was poking around with and figuring out what I was doing before it ever had the name Snapplique. 
once I gave it a name, it just kind of took off and people started doing it. They're like, oh, I get it now. You just had to call it the right thing. Whatever. Okay. So let me show you how to do this. I've shown it a hundred times, but I'm going to show it again because we have lots of new subscribers. Okay. So I've got these two ends here. I got a big old long spot where I need to put my, I've got these big old long threads too. Goodness. Look at that. She needs a haircut. <laughs> okay. So I lay this binding, this part of it out flat. This is on my left side. I lay the left side out flat. I'm going to give myself a little bit of working room. It doesn't matter how big the opening is. You just need some working room with your hands so you can turn those tails. Okay. So I do the left one first. I am a creature habit. This is a no measure method. Just lay it out flat. And I'm just going to take my shears and cut it. It doesn't matter where, but I've got a, I don't know, eight to 10 inches right there to play with. Okay. Now I'm going to use this piece I cut off as a measuring guide. Okay. Y'all, this is a big quilt and it's sitting right here on my table. Put that up smooth right there. I'm going to lay this out, open it up flat with the right side up. You tracking? So I've I've cut my left tail to give it some, give me some working room. I just don't, I don't want it to be, ugh. Okay. And then I've laid it out flat. Now the little piece I cut off, I'm going to put it right here with the edges, even with each other. So that I've got an L, I've got a backwards L. Get this right. I This needs to lay out flat. Okay, so I'm going to lay this out. I'm just trying to make sure it doesn't shift. Where's my, I don't want this to shift. So I'm going to lay this down here like this. Put that clip there. That's not going anywhere. Okay, now I know it's not going to pull back on itself. So I want to lay it out flat as best I can. trouble here. Okay. I've got my backwards L because I've taken my piece I cut off. Now I'm going to take the piece that I cut off. I'm going to move it towards center a quarter of an inch. So this is what it looks like now. Okay. All right. Now this one on the right, I'm going to lay it over folded Lay it out flat. We don't want any ripples or bumps underneath in the in the quilt. All right. Just lay it over nice and flat. And on the outer edge, the far left edge of the top of my L, I'm going to cut. Even with the far left edge, I'm going to cut this. Okay. It does not matter how how short or long this piece is. It doesn't matter. What you're after is the width. And you can use this method on every single width of my binding. It does not matter. All right. So now what you have to do, I'm going to pull these together a little bit, give yourself a little room here. And then with the one on your left out flat, the one on your right, Open it up with the back, the wrong side facing you. Okay. And you're going to turn it 360 degrees away from you, all the way around. Okay. So what I do is I open it up. You know, I'll notice I haven't measured a thing. I've, I've used the binding for measuring. I'm, I'm looking at the inside of the binding. I kick the bottom edge out away from me and flip it around 360 degrees, make a full, one full rotation. And then I'm gonna put these together exactly meeting those corners 
and I'm going to pin. And I'm leveling up these outer edges. And I'm going to pin over here on this side too. And it might be handy if you don't have a marking pen that's buried like mine under the under this quilt. I got stuff. I'll just use I'll just use a little pen. It's fine. And it can be handy to mark where that point is down here. Mark it on with a with an ink pen or a pencil or something or a marker. I don't. Yeah, I have a marker. What am I doing? Hold on. I have a one of those heat erasable markers. Make that stay there. And where that point is, is just make a make yourself a target to land at. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew diagonally from the upper left down to the bottom right. This is what I'm gonna do. And I unthreaded my machine while I was at it. That's great. My needle threader has um, gotten an attitude. I don't know. I don't know if um, the little hook inside has gone on vacation or oh, there it goes. See, just didn't hold it good enough. This is the only thing that really stinks about this machine, and I can do it. It just takes some time. See, it pulls it out again. This is the worst, worst <laughs> design. They must have had somebody on the junior team figuring this out. That's not working. If that hook gets, um, you know, bent one direction or the other, it just doesn't work. Just go back to the old fashioned. I just keep this needle threader right here on my sewing table to pull that through. All right. Okay. So now I've got to sew from left to right top left to bottom right on that diagonal right there and I'm going to put the point the bottom piece point right on the red line of my diagonal seam tape from cluck cluck sew and I'm watching this point to make sure it stays center Now, you should test it before you do it, but I've done it so many times. I know it's going to work. So, remove my pins. I know it looks like a twisted hot mess, y'all, but look. It works. See that? Isn't that fantastic? Now, I've got a big expanse of space here, and I'm not using a walking foot, so I am going to clip this in a couple of spots. Now, I'm going to trim that. Excess outside, leave a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay. Finger press that down. And I'm just going to use my clips, a couple of clips here. I've just got too much. If I had a walking foot, I wouldn't bump mind it but I don't I don't have one on this machine okay and then when I sew I'm going to start up <clears throat> to where before I finished let's see right there okay and then thumb under fingers on top and roll it and this helps keep the bottom edge from being pulled through faster than the top Thumb under, fingers on top, give it a roll. I learned that from Janet Prey from Islander Sewing Systems. Her mother used to work in the garment industry, and they didn't have time for pinning. So that's the way they do it in industry, non-couture. Go. 
Perfect. Ta-da. And we have a perfect diagonal seam binding right here. See that? The diagonal seam's right there. And it fit. Fits perfect. Ta-da. Isn't that beautiful? That turned out great. This thing needs some trimming, I believe. Yeah, I need some trimming. I got a little wide on a certain part of it here. I'm going to trim this a little. Unless this is good enough to go all the way over and cover. Yeah, it's fine. All right. What are you guys doing? Oh. Now, Wendy, I think that she said she got her baby lock accomplished, which is the baby locks version of this. And um, it has a walking foot. Yeah, I just never put it on. So now I'm going to go ahead and finish the binding on this. Yeah, it works every time. I know, Nan, it's great. Well, Midge, there's the problem. Okay, so Midge is saying she got the Fonz and Porter's tool. It's very similar to my method. The problem is it comes with written instructions. So your brain, yeah. Well, the thing is, though, um, what if you don't have that tool? What if you're at a retreat or, something, you know, and now you're like, well, I got to wait till I get home. Or, I just, this drove me bats for so long. I just sat there one day with strips of binding scraps and um, fabric. And I was like, I'm going to get this. I'm going to figure it out. And I'm going to do it in such a method that everybody gets it and I get it every single time. You can measure that. You can use this side of the plastic template. Yeah. Well, I taught you guys to make this, but I taught, I grabbed this from Karen Brown from Just Get It Done Quilts. This works the same. It's still two and a half inches. The issue with the template, if you want to do that, is um, I don't know what Novell... 1500 is. I don't know what that is. I haven't seen it, Dave. The issue with using a template is what if you're using two and a quarter inch binding? Now this doesn't work. That's the only downside of a template is, you know, but I always use two and a half inch binding. So, so a lot of people do like to, like Carol, she likes to put it on the back first and fold it over. And you can use a decorative stitch. That's all wonderful and good, y'all. No big deal. Whatever way works for you is fine. Okay, I'm changing out this foot. I'm going to be putting on the industrial ditch foot I got from Ken's Sewing. Some people tried putting this on their non-industrial machines. And um, I do not recommend it. I got it to work, but a lot of people couldn't. And they had to return them. This ditch foot it's from ken sewing it's got ind independent suspension so half of the foot does this and the other half doesn't move so this part of it rides over the top of the binding and then it's got a thicker it's got a thicker flange in the middle i don't know if you can see that it's kind of dark see how thick that flange is that's serious it's a lot better than the um the little thin one we got on the regular machine feet. Um, <clears throat> if you go to want one and you go to kensewing.com or it's the one in Alabama, then um, just when you search, just search for the word industrial and it'll come up. Okay. It's about 20 bucks. And if you get two of them, you don't have to pay shipping. So that's a good thing. I got two of them because I have two of these machines. I got one for here and one for the coast. All right. That wide flange shoves that binding out of the way. And then the needle goes right down into the ditch. And then when it goes by it, the rest of the binding will relax back over the stitching. And you cannot see it. It has disappeared. It's fantastic. I need my labels. I need a label. What do you guys think? Printed or woven? I think printed. So I get my labels from Dutch Label Shop. You guys ask me all the time. Dutch Label Shop. I have, these are my printed labels for, I don't know, table runners, wall hangings. I guess I could put 
And then my heirloom things, I have woven ones, although I don't think that it much matters. Woven labels are softer. You wanted to put them in a garment or something. I don't do garments anymore. But you can see, they do beautiful work. They're in full color. Isn't that nice? And um, so that one's woven. You can see the inside of there. And then this one is printed. And I had them put a little line on the back. See how it's printed? And it's a little bit more blurry on this one. But I had them put a line on the back so I can put the year. That's always nice. Yeah, I'll do that one. Okay. Dutch label shop. Okay. So I need to pin this somewhere. I didn't iron this. I probably should, but I didn't. Down here on a corner. The foot does not work on a luminaire. Yeah. Um, I, I got it to work on mine, but you got to be super careful and go super slow. You've got to, um, I start on center, needle center, and then work it over pretty far. Bump it over to the right. Widen that stitch pretty far. I got it to work on mine, but you guys, it's not supposed to work on a luminaire. Not supposed to. So I wouldn't get it. I love this foot. This foot was made for this kind of machine. Give me my. All right. Here we go. Oh. I got a new bobbin in here. I was playing bobbin chicken the other day and I won. <laughs> Yay. Get mine. This is a big quilt, you guys. Yeah, I know. I could use those, that holder thingy. It would, I'd be half done with the quilt by the time I got it out. You know how they, oh, I got strings. I need to put my trash can over here where my strings can go. You have the Juki version. Yeah, Chris said that's great. You want to, this is a great machine for bags. It really is. It's designed, um, it's got that pin feed and it's designed to, um, you know, hold things tighter. I have it on the purple uh, tension in, right in between purple and, and aqua. It's just so quick to do this. All right. When I do my um, my corners, can you guys see? Nope. I don't have it. All right. When I do my corners, I do the, the side I'm going toward first. Just fold that over. Get a good miter. Oh, that's way too wide. What was I doing? I didn't trim that well at all. I trimmed it while it was on the long arm and I wasn't very careful about it. Betty Boop, she says, that's not very accurate. <laughs> I said, I know. <laughs> I know it's not very accurate. This is going to be a snuggle quilt, you guys, here at my house. Okay. Pull that over, give it a pin. Yesterday I went to the UPS store and I got my, um, the last bit of Wonder, uh, Whisper Weave 2. I bought a Whisper Weave 2 Fat Quarter bundle from Fat Quarter Shop and it came in. So I pin my miters first. See that? I pin the miter first. You get that straight. And every so often I use the knee lift <clears throat> to settle the fabric with the needle down. I love this has a needle down. Oh, that's beautiful. Just beautiful. I'll show you guys here in a second. Let me get around the corner. Pull the pin before I hit it. 
and right into the corner. Needle down, make the turn, fold it over to cover it. Then I use my stiletto. Oh, that's not the stiletto. That's my seam ripper. I don't want that. I use my stiletto to kind of push this. There we go. Fold it over. I do about five or six inches at a time, I guess. <clears throat> so I'm thinking about getting my granddaughter <clears throat> an embroidery machine. Mo Queens has a heck of a deal on um, some of the five by sevens. The SE 2000, I believe it is from Brother. It's a five by seven hoop. Or I could get her the six by ten version of my gypsy, no Disney and no sewing version. All right, let me show you guys. Yeah, look at this. Let me get you in and show you how pretty this is. Look at that. It's perfect. I love this. Okay. Yeah. So... You know, in some places you've got a little flange from too much binding and some places it's right on the edge. I don't care. It's on the back and this is staying here with me. So this is not this method. You know, if I wanted to make it exactly perfect, <clears throat> I would take the time to go over to the ironing board and use some steam seam too and stitch it exactly where it needs to go. And I would iron it down so that it's perfect. And then I don't have to worry about shallow in some places or wide in others. And I used to do that. But as I say all the time, I'm lazy. And this quilt is just as pretty. I've got too much. I, I should have trimmed this better. You guys ever do this? I can see it. It's so wide. Do you do this at the machine? Why not? But I should have put it on the cutting table and given it a good trim before I got going and then I should have ironed it all down. Shoulda, woulda, coulda, huh? all those loose threads up under there. This is so nice, y'all. From the front, you cannot see that thread at all. It That flange has the, the thickness of that flange. It just shoves the binding over. I keep throwing, taking, you know, and you cannot see where that stitch line is. It's just beautiful. So pretty. Lovely. I'm very happy with this. Oh, I got threads. Oh my. What is all this? <laughs> oh, what, what's going on? Does anybody use a serger? Um, Heidi, I have the uh, Brother Airflow 3000. That's a very nice serger. I did a video on how to thread it. And uh, it is the near identical machine to the Baby Lock Air Threader. So take a look at the Brother Airflow 3000. Compare their specs and see if that's something you might be interested in. I love it. So the other day when my husband told me I had a hole in my t-shirt, I just... 
went right over there and in 30 seconds I was fixed. Of course, it sits there threaded. It's ready to go, right? I didn't get to work on a chicken yesterday. I got very busy shooting videos. What is going on here? Oh my word, I got threads. Did I stitch over something in the quilting? The quilting was done on my um, King Quilter Elite from Soul Machines Plus, just beautiful. And it's a pattern called Dulce from, um, Creative Stitches, I believe. All right. I'm still on. Oh, I did turn a corner. Yeah, check that out. I really, really like it. Which baby lock is the airflow equivalent to? Bernadette, it's the, um, is it the Citation? What's the name of that machine? I got a picture of my granddaughter sewing on it, I think. Or ovation. Which is it? I can't remember. Whichever the baby lock air, airflow serger is. And um, the Celebrate. Yeah, I think that's it. Let me look. Let me find my grandbaby girl and see. My son took a picture of her photos. It's in favorites. Oh, you guys, yesterday I had said that that Very Merry Mugs was from Vanessa From, uh, that she had designed it. I didn't mean to. It was designed by Bruce Allen. It's got Bruce Allen designs on there. He just sells under the name of Fabric Confetti. So I just needed to straighten that out. Okay, here she is. It is a celebrate. Yes. Is that the airflow? There's my grandbaby girl surging at the age of 10 on a celebrate. Okay. You're late. You're late. Hi, Sonia. You're not late. You're fine. Don't worry about that. Do the binding from back to front and then sew with the machine. Yeah, I know, Patty. I, I'm uh, back to front. I've done it before. Uh, I don't I, personal preference. We'll just go with that to do it this way. I've been doing this this way for years. My whole thing is, is you just, you know, you see one line of stitching on the back and no stitching on the front. And to me, that gives the look more of hand binding. Now, I've been doing this a long time, and when I first started, I used to miss spots all the time. And I'd have to go, you know, at the end, I'd have to go back and check and double check and see where the, where the, um, well, when, if you get that, uh, I can, you might, I've got a link to Sew Machines Plus. And um, they've got that. I think they can sell that serger out, out of state lines. I don't know. But if you go to a brother dealer, tell them you heard it from me. They, they're figuring out that I sew a lot online with brother products. And if they see that I'm mentioning their products, they'll invite me to come and do classes at their stores. And that's the idea, because a lot of you go, oh, come up north. Well, if nobody invites me to come up there, I'm not going up there, right? Because they got to have a class space and, or rent something out, something like that. They got to have room. I finished a quilt on the long arm yesterday, too, that I was working on, and um successfully cropped the bottom edge. Thank you, Harriet, for sending me the instructions for that. It's about creating a new area. That was cool. Ooh, doggies, this is a big quilt. Yeah, it's on Soul Machines Plus. Yeah, Heidi. I've got a link 
below my videos, it's it, I'm actually an affiliate for Sewing Machines Plus, so if you'd use my link, I'd appreciate it. I get some credit for that. Um, and if they'll send it to you out of state, that's great. That helps me. Oh, I got a thread. And then you can watch my video on how to thread it. And it's such an amazing serger. I did buy the 3550 as well, which is a serger cover stitch uh, combo. So I'm going to take, but it's not an airflow. I don't think. No, it's not. Man, I got threads. Good grief. Y'all, this fabric, oh, this shreds. Have you guys noticed that fabric shreds more? I don't know if the manufacturing process, this is high-end fabric. This is all Riley Blake. You know, so I don't know if the manufacturing process has changed. Oh, wherever they make this. China. Right. Okay, let me move this around. I'm looking forward to that guild talk I'm doing on Thursday up at Cibolo Valley Quilt Guild. I need to, I've got some paperwork I gotta send them. They were asking me for. So I gotta do that. I gotta send paperwork to Mo Queens. I got so much admin work to do. I need a staff. Yesterday I had to pay my state sales taxes. That was fun. I was up till after 11 o'clock fiddling around on the comptroller's website. It never ends. Coming up on another corner. Yay. You don't think I would want to be a brother brand ambassador? No, I don't. Yeah, that's exactly right. El Faber, um, oh, it's National Surger Month. Lots of deals. There you go. You're absolutely right, Patty. Um, I was talking to Angela Wolf about that. And she said... Um, um, I hire Frito. She knows the business. <laughs> You're hilarious. I love that. Um, she was saying, if you don't like deadlines, that's not the job for you. I said, no, I don't like deadlines, you know, because sometimes, um, it's, you know, and sometimes I'll be working on a project and it either, uh, something else takes priority or I lose interest or I don't know. Or I put a Ken sewing machine foot, you know, an off brand, whatever on a brother machine. You can't do that. If you're a brand ambassador, being a brand ambassador is quite the honor. And I, I love all those ladies. You know, whether it's um, Angela Wolf or Cindy Hogan, they're all great. They're all great. I've met many of them. Oh, I need my. I got Bonnie. She helps me. Bonnie Cone, she's in the chat. She's, uh, she's my rally manager. She does good work. Oh, today's the last day for the 10% off code for Embrilliance. Good through April 9th, I think it was. So if you're thinking about getting any new modules of Embrilliance, I've got a link below you guys. If you'd use that, we're getting ready to um, get rocking and rolling on that Happy Halloween quilt. You see this? This is why I don't bind by hand. What's the difference between serging and a cover stitch? Well, Judy, um, let me back out. I'll tell you. I tell you, I tell you. <laughs> so serging is, um, you know what serging is. So if you look on the inside of a seam, we're going to look at the inside of my t-shirt here. Okay. So, it, and it's especially good for knits. Let me get up real close. You can see my writing on my shirt. I don't want to show you the roll. You don't want to see the roll. Okay. So the serge seam cuts and 
finishes off the inside, both sides. It's very nice. It'll cut and finish it off at the same time. A cover stitch machine does the double edge, the double stitched hem and surges. It, it does this and it in, in home machines, I don't know about industrial, but it, it doesn't cut. Okay. So it finishes off the seam with, it looks like a serge seam, but it's got a double stitch on the top. So that is uh, the difference between them. So they each, they're, a, so I have a combo cover stitch serger. My coffee got buried. Here it is. Yeah, I think you're right, El Faber. She says it would take the fun out of, whoop. Yeah, by the end of the day, I'm covered in threads too, crafty. <laughs> it would take it out. Um, it would take the fun out. I agree. Yeah, then you're working for somebody, you know, and I like not working for anybody but Frito and my husband. He works for me too. Yesterday I was like, hey, there's, the trees need some attention in the backyard. Please <laughs> find your way out there and handle that. <laughs> I figured I would just do this with you guys this morning because I have, if I don't, it's just going to hang on that wall for months. And what's the point of that? I got a, uh oh. Couple of threads here. There we go. But when we get done here, <clears throat> I've got a DAR meeting today, Daughters of the American Revolution. I tell you, it is. I loved being regent of my chapter the last two years, but now that I'm not anymore, oh, I feel so much weight off my shoulders, you know, I mean, I did, it was kind of my turn. You know how those clubs are. You guys. I loved it. I loved every minute of it. I love all the ladies. I've been friends with these ladies for years. Very nice. And I could certainly not go today, but, um, I, I'm, we only meet September through May. And uh, in May, I'm going to be on the Sew and Sail Cruise 14 with Juju and you guys. So I'm going to miss my DAR meeting in May. So I won't see these ladies again until September. So I'm, I'm making it a point. I want to go today. If you are uh, think you might have a Revolutionary War ancestor and you are interested in DAR, please let me know. Send me an email and I will get you started on the process. They've got a fantastic genealogical library. You need to get your first three generations of birth certificates, death certificates, and marriage licenses. For you, your parents, and your grandparents. And after that, it's pretty much home free sailing. So it's pretty good. Pretty good thing. It's a wonderful genealogical. It's nice to know where you come from, right? Nice to know where you come from. So you wish you'd known about Embrayas before you bought Floriani, Judy? I know. And Judy, you know, not, it. you might even still, the learning curve on Floriani is quite steep. So I'm told, okay, you might know it pretty well and love it. And that's great. I just recommend some sort of embroidery software for y'all, you know, some sort, you need something. Cause it was so nice yesterday to take the, um, the background stitching for the happy Halloween quilt. And I had to resize it just a tiny bit to make it fit in my basting stitch, the basting box. And then, uh, multiply it over and over, you know, and move things around just so incredibly handy. So if, you know, these larger machines can do some digitizing, that's fine, but it's clunky 
and rustic. So even in Brilliance Essentials, if you've got, you know, Luminaire and you think you don't need any embroidery software, I would recommend at least Essentials. It's less than 100 and I think it's like $139. It's cheap, you guys, for the fun of being able to use BX fonts to add letters and, you know, copy, paste, merge, all of that. Is anybody hemming right or binding right along with me? Anybody out there doing that with me? Let's see. Am I turning the binding twice on the back that I'm working now? No, Lynn, I'm not. No. Uh -uh. So this is the folded edge of the binding. I'm just folding it over. I stitched it to the front. I'm just folding it over exactly as if I was hand stitching. It's a two and a half inch binding strip. It's got a pretty good size hole on it too, so I can see down in there. There we go. Sometimes you got to kind of fudge it just a tiny bit so that you don't go onto the binding. Just give it a little tug back toward you. Put some English on it, as my mother used to say. How'd that last one go? Oh, that went nice. Yeah, see? I love that. This method is awesome. Look how big this quilt is. My goodness. I cannot sit in front of a TV at all. I can sit in front of YouTube. But I can't sit in front of the TV and bind. It's just my brain. One of the ladies in um, the class this weekend, she had her laptop with her. She was working while she was there sewing. <laughs> she was like, I have to multitask. I can't sit still. <laughs> Then I get it. So she was waiting on her turn on the scan and cut. And I, I'd do the same thing. That would be me completely. My brain, I'm just ding, ding, ding. Got to do something. Oh, last night. So on the way home from Arizona, I watched Emma on the plane. And uh, not the one with one of the Paltrow, but an English version. I watched that and I, I got a minute and 14 or a, an hour and 14 into it and we landed. So they cut it off on me. And then uh, last night um, I pulled it up on Amazon Prime and watched the rest of it, which was awesome. It had some commercials, but I don't care. And uh, then I watched Jane Eyre. I have never watched... Jane Eyre. And it's, those books are hard to read. <clears throat> They're kind of hard to read. So I watched Jane Eyre. It was great. It was the English version. I loved it. And then Prince and the Pauper was next. And I was like, all right, I got to go to bed. <laughs> I had enough. <laughs> but I might pull that up. Isn't technology wonderful? I could pull that up on the road while we're traveling to Louisiana. So I'd, I'd like to find some quilt stores along the path. I'm not getting as far north as Conroe, but I'd like to find some quilt stores along the path. There's not one near Vidalia, I looked. You guys know of any, let me know. We're taking 290 across Texas. Um, how are we doing? Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Oh, it's eight o'clock. Good gosh, our our uh, hour has already gone by. My goodness, I'm gonna keep working on this and I'm gonna let you guys go. So, this has been uh industrious. <laughs> I've gotten a lot done. <laughs> so uh, 
Hey, uh, thank you so much for spending your time and starting your day with me. This has been a lot of fun. If you're watching on the replay, thanks for taking time out of your day. Uh, I love being with you guys. If you want to spend more time together, hit the subscribe button and um, enjoy your, your day. I will be here again tomorrow at 7 a.m. Central. And I don't know where my mouse is buried under a big quilt. So I'm going to have to use my touch screen. All right, you guys. Um, I will talk to you soon. You guys go say something. Bye.